Hello everyone, my name is Marco Previll and I'm from Technische Hochschule Ingolstadt in Germany and I'm presenting to you today the work Quantifying the Scanner-Induced Domain Gap in Mitosis Detection. If you also work in the field of digital histopathology, you might already know the issue. If you look at slides from different laboratories, you will certainly have also found that they look vastly different. And this difference in visual representation well, leads, of course, if you then train a deep learning model when it to a difference in the representation space. And this domain shift or domain gap, if we're talking about detection, is then, of course, a big problem because it can severely deteriorate your results. And this, of course, hinders robustness. Well, our own investigations have shown that the differences between labs might actually not be that strongly influenced by the staining procedure itself, but more by the scanner that they use. And this gave the inspiration to, well, organize the MyDoc challenge on this year's Mikai, where the challenge is, is exactly that, to detect mitosis not only on one scanner type, but on multiple scanner types that are not known, of course, to the participants. We selected 200 cases as part of our training set. Each were randomly assigned from a consecutive selection of the diagnostic archive of the UMC Utrecht. And uh, that's why we believe that they should be fairly representative of the um, actual case. And as you can see here, we do have quite a strong difference in visual appearance just based on the scanner that was used. So keep in mind that this, these were all taken from the same archive and from the same kind of um, yeah, um, year span. And since we now already had a nice data set to evaluate the performance drop based on the scanner that was used, we wanted to do this. And this is the reason for this short paper. The first step that we did is that we used a standard retina net object detection workflow. And of course, with this, you can evaluate metrics such as the F1 metric. We have looked into the representation space of the model and there we found that the domain dependency is not so much surprisingly deter or decreasing coming from the input uh, going towards the classification. And this is why we thought it might be worthwhile to also try another method, method on it besides the pure performance F1 method. The second method is that we use the proxy A distance or here as PAD star. And the idea there was that we just take a model as it was trained, the retina model as it was trained. We just then take the last layer of the classifier just before the classification itself. And then we added a, a small kind of network to that, um, that in which uh, the task of the network um, would be to differentiate if this was now the same scanner that this network was trained on or it was another scanner where this network was not trained on. So this so-called proxy A distance is um, a kind of heuristic in order to find out how strongly domain dependent the features that you find here at the very last point in the network actually are. Now let us now come first to the results of the first approach. As you can see here in this table, there is a strong difference in performance between the in-domain and the out-of-domain results when we look at the F1 score in mitosis detection. Then we ran our experiments on the PAD star metric and we found that there is a strong difference between the models trained on different sets. Yet we did not find any correlation between this PAD star metric and the drop in performance as given by the F1 score of the model beforehand. So um, that is all I wanted to tell you today. Um, if you think that this is a really interesting challenge to overcome, please join MyDoc. It's still open and available. Um, you can find the URL on this sheet.